with the river knowledge for your liver. Shit ain't up on Twitter. Smartphones, one of the greatest creations in the world, yet one of the unhealthiest creations in the world. Almost everyone is guilty of having a smartphone addiction, but you know this addiction has reached a new level of unhealthy when you can't go to sleep at night without it beside you. Having your devices in the bedroom charging overnight, even without it in the bed with you, is problematic enough. A survey done by YouGov found that 63% of smartphone users between the ages of 18 and 29 sleep with their phones or tablets in their beds. I don't know about you, but having my phone in the bed with me stops me from getting rest. Most people I know have chronic sleep deprivation and it's most likely linked to devices in our sleep spaces. If you have an iPhone like me, I'm sure you know about the night shift feature that adds a warm backlight to your device. This makes it even more impossible to go to sleep to me. This only adds fuel to our addictions. I find myself on the phone longer because my brain is telling me the warm light won't keep me up. Staying connected to our devices until bedtime and keeping devices in our sleeping environments affects our ability to fall asleep and disrupts the quality of sleep we achieve by disrupting the body's production of melatonin. After staying up late on the phone, scrolling through your newsfeed, what's the first thing you do when you wake up? You check your newsfeed on social media again, don't you? I know I do. Our everyday lives have become filled with technology. When I'm out and about walking, I don't use my phone, but I've noticed almost everyone else does. How many times have you bumped into someone, or nearly bumped into someone, or vice versa, because you were on the phone, or because they were on the phone? I'm sure it's more times than you can count, right? I've been bumped into by people on their phone so many times, once, I was even bumped into and not apologized to. Our media consumption and engagement have become a part of our everyday lives, so much that we are sometimes unconscious to the things around us. Another issue with bringing cell phones and other devices to bed is relationship problems. I don't deal with this anymore, but I do believe this is probably one of the reasons for my failed relationships. This actually translates to this. So our relationships end up failing because we don't know how to communicate in person, only via text. Don't get me wrong, I think smartphones are awesome. Smartphones make it possible to do so many things on the go. But when it comes down to our personal relationships, is it really the best way to strengthen them? Imagine getting in a fight with your boyfriend or girlfriend. Would you argue with them over text, over the phone, or in person? When I communicate with my significant other, I choose to leave big things for in-person conversations. But for some people, they would much rather send a text because it's easier. This concept referred to as polymedia creates an environment for endless communication opportunities based on affordances. People pick how they communicate based on what works for them and sometimes switch between different types of medium to achieve the purpose they think can be accomplished by that form of medium. When I talk to my friends, we text and communicate via social media. But when it's a serious conversation, I talk to them on the phone if we can't make it happen in person. I would say I have a semi-healthy relationship with my devices, but I could use some time away from time to time to focus on me and other things besides what's happening on social media. Complex. 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 Look at the skies, to my surprise A nigga always fucking up, I never realize